This is Chris Idaho Painter here on Paint Live TV. We're gonna be putting Benjamin Moore's Fresh Start All Purpose High Hiding Primer, an interior exterior product to the test. We're gonna be doing an accent wall. So we're gonna be testing the product. We're gonna be giving a review of it. Is this a product that you should be using? Is it a product you should invest your money in? We're gonna give you our opinion in our review right here on Paint Live TV. So stay tuned for this video. All right, we managed to make it out here to our uh, job site where we're working on this accent wall. And we've got this accent wall we're painting from the beadboard right up here. We're gonna be painting this in accent color. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about primers and I'm gonna be using a primer on this wall. And um, I get questions all the time. Do I need to prime my walls before painting? So I'm gonna talk about you know multiple scenarios and whether you need a primer or not. So I'm gonna talk about you know uh, primers in general. I'm gonna talk about one aspect of primers. Primers, uh, they promote adhesion. So if you're going to have any type of adhesion issues, yes, you're going to need a, a primer. This wall right here has been a freshly painted white wall. It's flat paint. And uh, do I need to prime this wall? If I'm going over with an interior paint over the top of that, I do not need to uh, prime that wall because I don't have any adhesion issues. It's a freshly coated painted surface. Now, if this wall itself was say a high gloss paint or a semi gloss paint or some type of trim paint on there, that would cause my top coat going over the top of that to probably have some type of adhesion issues. It wouldn't bond very well. I'm gonna need to prime that to get a good bite or a good bond uh, with my top coat. If I have any type of contaminants on this wall, if I've got uh, grease on the wall, if I've got anything on this wall that could cause any type of adhesion issues, then yes, I'm going to need a primer on this wall itself. Now, once again, this is a freshly coated a wall, it's um, nicely done. It doesn't have any adhesion issues under this fresh coat of paint. Putting a top coat right over the top of that does not require a primer. So another thing I'll talk about when it comes to primers, uh, my accent color going over the top of this white, uh, is that gonna require a primer or not? And if I don't have any type of adhesion issues, if this isn't a semi-gloss wall, if it's not a high gloss wall, it's not oil-based paint, I can paint right over the top of that. Um, then I would be good to go. But you could be uh, painting an accent color like uh, a lime green color or a candy apple red color, any type of vibrant colors, any type of really dark accent colors, probably accent colors going in an ultra deep base or a deep base would require a primer, not for adhesion purposes, but so we can get a good even color across our entire wall and not have lap marks, not have um, uneven uh, darks and lights all over the wall. Now, if I was doing a candy apple red over the top of this white right here, I would say it's probably gonna take, you know, between somewhere between five and 10 coats to get that candy apple red to be a true candy apple red and not be extremely translucent, but you're still gonna be building up on your lights and darks and overlap marks. And the only way to, to describe that is that when I roll here and I come down and roll again and I overlap, those overlap marks are gonna be darker on the um, first coat than, than the middle portions that don't have like multiple overlaps on it. And what happens is your first coat, if it um, has any lights and darks, they're only gonna build up on top of each other and continue to be lights and darks even after 10 coats. What a primer is gonna do, I'm gonna talk about a primer and how that's gonna help you not have to do five to 10 coats and be uh, extremely frustrated putting on your uh, top coat. You're gonna put on a primer that's gonna have a color in it and it's going to have a specific sheen that's gonna make that process a lot faster, easier, and you're gonna have a nice, true, even color across your wall. So now when it comes to getting that true color, I'll kind of um, just try to explain just a little bit more. Instead of having a white, I've got a primer right here. I'm gonna be using Benjamin Moore's Fresh Start Primer right here. It appears like um, it's just straight out of the can, but I did have this tinted. And one of the things that tinting is gonna do for you, and I had it tinted a um, kind of a light gray, and I like to call it a P4 gray. And, um, but it's really just 
any light gray is going to work for you other than just pure white and a true like a light um, gray color is going to give you a base coat and the flat paint is also flat so it's going to give you this uh, nice light not white base coat but gray base coat that's going to make any type of really translucent colors or ultra deep colors cover a lot better and um, keep them even and consistent throughout the um, first coat. Your first coat is extremely important. No matter what, you're gonna have overlapping marks, but the gray is really gonna help it even out and not show so much lights and darks in between your overlaps. So I'm gonna give you a look at what this looks like now. I've got my gray and once again, any type of uh, your gray color you don't want the gray to be too dark and you want the gray to be too light and a um especially like i, I did a, a lime green wall i did a um, candy apple red wall those two and this color works really well you can see here's white and now there's my gray color right there and that this gray color right here works out really well with a lot of ultra deep colors um, especially vibrant colors when it comes to giving you a nice even undercoat um, for your a base coat basically and essentially basically all right, so one other thing I want to just talk about when it comes to primers and do you actually need a primer. So we talked about your adhesion issues. If you're going to have any type of adhesion issues, if you got any type of glossy surface, contaminated surface, yes, you are going to need a primer. If you are going to be doing any type of vibrant colors, yes, you're going to want a primer and you really should tint it underneath. Another thing is, is a primer is by nature is flat and sheen. And if this wall was say a satin and I'm going to try to do like an accent color over the top of that on a satin wall what happens is when you start uh, rolling like deep colors and ultra deep colors is uh, I like to describe it like they like to smear and drag on a satin um, paint or anything like an eggshell um, satin uh, semi-gloss and gloss it'll kind of like smear and just move around and it has like this waxy looks look and feel to it and instead with a flat paint when you start to roll it on the flat by nature is porous and the paint goes on absorbs into the flat paint absorbs into the primer and doesn't smear and drag around and it makes you or make or gives you the ability to put on a more even coat across your wall and not having those um, highs and lows or lights and darks all right so i'm going to get ready and start uh, doing this accent wall and we'll give you a look at what it's going to look like we're going to give you a look at what the fresh start uh, primer going on here is going to look like as our un Undercoat. I'm gonna want to mask. We're not doing any painting here. I don't want any splatter, you know, dripping down on um, my beadboard. We are putting this uh, Fresh Start paint to the test. We're gonna see how splatter resistant it is um, as we're painting right along here. So I'm just gonna mask off. I don't want anything bleeding onto my trim. So I'll be using frog tape here keep any primer from bleeding on my trim. I typically, when I'm doing my undercoat or primer coat on an accent wall, I'm not gonna be touching my tape, but I'm applying my tape just in case to stop splatters. So when choosing a primer, if you have any type of contamination on the wall, any type of uh, markings, crayons, um, Sharpie markers, tan and bleed, you definitely wanna choose a primer that's gonna you know, block any type of contamination you know, bleeding through, especially if your accent color or wall color is gonna be a light color.
All right, now I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts about Benjamin Moore's Fresh Start Primer. We've been using the product now and I just got done doing an accent wall and I'm gonna give you some of the thoughts about using the product on that accent wall. I'm gonna start off by uh, saying one of the things I do really like about the primer is that it is tintable. So this is a white uh, base and they also have a deep base and you can tint both of the products. So if you want it tinted a really dark color, you can tint it a dark color and if you're gonna use use a lighter color like this it is tentable and that's uh that comes into play when you're going to be doing really dark accent walls or vibrant colors it's really important to get a good undercoat so it's tentable and i really like that this fresh start is tentable so another thing i do like about the product uh we did tent it i put um some black in there we got a great undercoat you know for our accent wall and the the product covered absolutely amazing so the gray covered amazing and the white cover is amazing so if you want a primer that covers really well so if you're going over the top of a dark color or vibrant color and you want that to cover well this product is going to be a product that's going to perform really well for you another thing that was really high on my list is is splattering or spattering paints that splatter or spatter uh, are messy paints they do just cause you all kinds of headaches and once again you just stand a chance of getting paint on the floors if you're not dropping things or just getting paint all over the place in general especially if you're painting overhead i do got to say the accent wall that we were painting I had this tinted I think I had two ounces of black put in there to make this a p4 gray and after rolling that wall uh, I didn't notice any splatter or spatter on the tape or the paper or on the drop cloth at all so I think it's spatter resistance is absolutely amazing another thing that's really important when it comes to primers is the primers ability to bond to the surface that it's going over and one thing I noticed with this product it did bond extremely well and one of those just unscientific tests that I typically do is if I get paint on my hands yo how well does it clean off I did get uh, some of the primer all over my hands and it was extremely difficult to get off um, I did some scratch tests some adhesion tests on the walls it was definitely on there uh, for good it's a great primer when it comes to its bonding capabilities so I guess one final thing that I'll hit when it comes to the primer is uh, that I did really like about it is its dry time so it did dry pretty uh, fast. I wouldn't say it's the fastest prime, uh, uh, fastest drying primer that I've ever used before, but it did dry relatively quick. We were doing a small accent wall. I think I could have recoded um, over that accent wall within a, an hour. Some of that's going to de be determined by you know heat and humidity. If you need to paint over it fast, just crank up that heat, get rid of some of the humidity, and it's going to dry really fast for you. So it did uh, dry really quickly. And um, I did like that about the primer. So a couple other things I do want to touch on is the odor of the product. So the odor, it didn't have a very strong odor at all when I was using the product. And there are a lot of primers out there just by the nature of the product, um, the chemicals that go into primers, they typically do smell really strong, have strong odors. Uh, this was a pretty low odor product in, in my opinion. And for me, I kind of am sensitive to uh, smells now as I've been painting for so many years. Uh, some products give me a headache when I'm around them you know uh, for you know extended periods of time but this the product didn't have a bad odor didn't have a strong odor the other thing is it is a water-based product now I'm uh, I, I just really don't like solvent based coatings because uh, of the strong odors and because of the difficult um, cleanup of the products and stuff and typically some of the tools like the rollers and stuff like that you're not gonna be able to clean them up you're gonna have to throw them away it's really difficult to clean up the brushes and in a lot of places solvent based coatings um, there's a lot of rules and regulations to using those products so I did really like it that it was a water-based product also all right a couple other things I just want to you know bring up the primer itself it's an interior exterior acrylic primer and it is uh, provides a mildew resistant coating and that's going to um, come into play if you're painting bathrooms a lot of bathrooms you know um, in certain areas in high uh, humidity areas along the coast and stuff like that they'll have
have mold and mildew issues, you can resolve the mold and mildew issue getting rid of it. Then you can use this as an undercoat to your top coat and it will provide a mildew resistant coating. So it's really good for that if you're um, searching out a primer that is mildew resistant. All right, so I'm just gonna give you, uh, just gonna pull off a few of the key points on the back of the can, because I know I'll probably get some questions about the product itself. Try to answer those questions right here. The coverage, I always get people asking about coverage. It covers uh, four to 500 square feet per gallon. The dry time, it states, is one hour to the touch. To recoat is two hours. We're always pushing those limits. Um, I'm typically gonna paint right over this stuff as soon as it's you know a paintable over the top. And the, to the dry time, one hour and two hours to the touch is really gonna uh, vary according to how dry it is where you are and the humidity levels. Uh, soap and water cleanup, uh, use uh, warm water and soap to clean up. And um, it does say maybe tinted with up to two ounces of Benjamin Moore Gen X colorants per gallon. So if you have it tinted, make sure who's ever the Benjamin Moore authorized dealer that they're putting in um, Gen X colorants on it. And um, it's got a wide variety of uses and applications. And it does say um, do not thin the product. And, um, and it says apply one to two coats when you're using the product. So there's a few of the specifications on the back and hopefully that may answer any of your questions you may have about the product. So a couple of things I wanna to touch on with the product, you know, that I noticed with the product, one of them was uh, some micro bubbling that I had uh, in the, the product itself. When I opened up the can, I poured it into my pan to start rolling it from my accent wall. And I noticed in the pan, there's some bubbles in the pan, started rolling it on the wall, got some micro bubbling on the wall. And I have a feeling it's related to the tint that was put in the product. The tint caused it to just bubble a little bit. Uh, I rolled out the walls the bubbles pop there wasn't any issues with it you know on the top coat another thing just want to touch on is the product's ability to hang now it's really important to get a product that hangs really well so you don't get runs especially when you're doing you know cut-ins there's nothing worse than going back and having to fix runs now I put a lot of tint in this to get it tented as a white base and I got a couple runs and one of the things I noticed is the product covers so well you don't have to put on as much and so I was getting getting you know a few runs here and there because I was putting it on super heavy wanting it to cover you know in one coat which I didn't need to because it covered absolutely amazing so just a little bit of a learning curve uh, one thing you'll figure out is the product covers so well you don't have to put it on heavy and um, by not putting it on heavy you're not going to get those runs so you know um, just notice that you know with its ability to hang all right, so we're to the end of the video. Now this product, we've got to grade this product. Is this something you should purchase? Is it something you should use? We've got our ladder. We're gonna put it to the ladder test. Where is it gonna fall on the ladder? Is it a top rung product, a bottom rung product, or a middle rung product? So I gotta say, you know, right off the bat, this is a product I definitely like to use in and I would definitely recommend using. It's like a lot of Benjamin Moore's products. I've used quite a few of their products and they make absolutely amazing products. It's rare that I ever run into anything from Benjamin Moore that isn't good. This is a primer that performs extremely well. It's an all-purpose primer. It's something that I would use day in and day out. The price I think I paid uh, for this gallon, I got it at my local um, hardware store. Uh, I think it was an Ace Hardware or True Value Hardware store um, right here, Downtown Eagle. Once again, I think I paid $41 a gallon for it. It was worth every penny. I think this is a top tier product. This is something that I would put on the top rung right there. And I would highly recommend you using it if you need a primer for uh, your day in and day out projects, interior or exterior. If you've ever used this product, if you got any tips or tricks about the product, or if you got any comments about the products, just leave it down in the comment section below. We would love to hear about uh, your thoughts about the product, good or bad. Um, we learn from you just like you learn from us. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've learned anything about it, give us a thumbs up. It really encourages us to keep making these videos. And um, we're going to make another video. So hopefully we'll see you right here on Paint Life TV.